Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Party Game Review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Bucket of Doom. Toxic Edition. Because apparently there's a non-toxic edition? I'm not sure. But in the game Bucket of Doom, it's for ages 17 and up, and it's an adult party game, and now with the evil stench of forfeiting. <laughs> which basically means that there's a nasty stench in here in which you're gonna have to open up and smell if you fail in some way in this game. In the game, The Bucket of Doom, you're basically going to be playing a story game. So think about Once Upon a Time, but it's in a party mode. Everybody's gonna get eight cards and they're gonna have tools on these cards, certain things like maybe a clown horn or an umbrella or 18 foot stilts. And then somebody's going to read one of those Doom cards. Maybe you're a mouse and you've stumbled into a crumb factory, but unfortunately, it happens to be surrounded with cats. How do you escape? Will you use as many of the weapons as you want or tools in any way you want, telling a story, and then everyone will vote on who they think is the best story. After everybody's voted on who the best story was, then, and only then, will the player that succeeds get the card, and everybody else is gonna draw a special type of card which may make them smell the nasty bucket of doom. And if they have to smell that, well, it's, it sucks for them. The player who gets three doom cards first is the winner, and that's basically how you play. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what you get in here. And uh, then after that, I'll give you my review. Pretty simple, right? So here's Big Potato Games, Big Bucket of Doom, and we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up here, and I'm gonna show you what all comes inside. Firstly, of course, you're gonna get some uh, stench danger cards, as well as this rule book here, which tells you how to play. It's very, very simple, but you don't have to read it. They actually give you a little QR code that you can go ahead and uh, look up the rules as to how to play. And then they have some alternative rules on the other side. Then what else do we got in here? These are all the danger cards. These are all the bucket of doom cards. And then you're gonna have your little stench thing here. And then you're going to get all of these weapon cards or tool cards. It really depends on how you want to use them. But when we use them, there's a lot of weapons that we're, we were turning things into weapons, which I guess can happen in this little story time game. I'm gonna put this back over here. There you go. All right, so let's talk about it. Basically, everybody's gonna get eight of these cards here. I'll just go ahead and draw myself eight randomly. And uh, then one of the players is going to take one of these cards and read it. You land on an alien planet. As you step out of your rocket, you're slammed to the ground. Gravity here is 50 times stronger than on Earth's. Wow. Okay, so I'm on an alien planet that has 50 times more gravity. How am I gonna get out of that situation? I would then look at my weapons or tools, a jack-o'-lantern I have to use, a big ba box of Crayolas, a uh, $1,000 sunglass hut gift card, <laughs> a clip-on tie, placentia cookbook, a stretch Armstrong toy, a long distance laser pointer, and a possessed typewriter. Maybe I'd want to use the ghost of a possessed typewriter in some way to manipulate the gravity to help me escape or uh, use my stretch Armstrong to throw myself a whip back to my spaceship. Who knows? There's a bunch of different things you can utilize in this game in order to give yourself an idea of how to escape. These cards have a front and a back, and they both technically can be used as a front or a back in either way. A banana guard on one side or a jack-o'-lantern on the other. Decide on which side you're going to be playing on before you begin. It just gives you a little bit more creativity and you can go ahead and you have more cards for the lack of, uh, for, for less amount of product. After everybody then does their story, everybody's going to vote on who they think the best story is and that person is going to get one, uh, going to get the card that was the, that was played out, which was the Bucket of Doom card. That player is then going to distribute these cards provided there's at least the this one card here, which is the, the big Doom card. So if there's a four or five player game, he'll take those five cards. Then we will shuffle these cards here and deal one to each of the players. Everybody on the count of three is gonna go one, two, three and flip over their cards. And the player that gets this one is gonna to have to take this big stenchy smell here. Oh, oh, and I have to, I have to smell that smell. And then after that, then the player who had to smell the smell is going to be the one that takes the next bucket of Doom card. You're gonna distribute cards to every player that utilized their cards. So if you use five cards, you're gonna get five new cards. You always have eight cards for every round. And play again. Once somebody gets three of these cards, wins three rounds, uh, you can play basically as many rounds as you want though. The game is over and you've smelled the last of Bucket of Doom at least for now. All right, let me tell you what I think about the game. Bucket of Doom by Big Potato Games and uh, whether or not you'll be interested. All right. 
right, so what do I think about the game Big Bucket of Doom by Big Potato Games? Well, first of all, I have no idea if there's anything other than the Toxic Edition. I imagine this is probably the only one. But if you like storytelling party games, this is going to be up your alley. It is a judging game like Cards Against Humanity, but you're going to be using a lot more noggin joggin technology in your brain to, uh, in order to function or whatever. I don't know how you want to say it, but basically you're having to come up with different concoctions. You're going to be given a certain amount of tools and you have to get out of sticky situations. Leopard print onesies, ham and magic, mushroom pizza, blue whale scrotum, level 10 Thetan psychology badge, toast with the face of the Virgin Mary. There's all these things. Most of them are useless, so it, it takes some real creativity. Let's read a couple of these cards, too. You're a mouse who just crawled into a caf cat cafe uh, in search of crumbs. It's uh, a cafe in search of crumbs. It's a cat cafe. You're riding a wrecking ball for your new music video. Suddenly, the chain snaps, and you're flying through a window totally naked. While taking selfies at the top of Chicken Itza, you topple backwards down a shaft into the arms of an undead mummy. So there's all these situations that are bad and uh, humorous in some way or shape or form. And basically, you're going to always be using these. This, this game has pretty much endless amounts of replayability. There's going to be so many different tools and how you come up with your escape is going to be up to you and it really just telling the stories is fun. It reminded me of playing Once Upon a Time but instead of cooperatively playing competitively this is completely Play, you're playing it solo in a way, but in a way that everybody is going to enjoy your story. So if you can come up with stories on the fly, you're going to really dig this game. You have to be a creative, imaginative person, somebody who's a writer. This is also a good way to teach a writing class or whatever, to get you know, your students interested in learning and, 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 and wanting to come up with their own creative writing techniques. This is going to help them in that aspect. Uh, the a little additional bucket of doom here uh when i got my bucket of doom unfortunately it didn't have any smell to it it came with a little squishy pad and i smelled in there i couldn't smell i don't know if it was due to shipping or what but i added some of this some of this adventure scent stuff to it the one specifically that's for the uh, wharf fisherman's wharf and it smells terrible so that one i think will suffice for what i need additionally the uh, russian roulette aspect with this is really fun in the game uh if you're like grant this is a game that you're going to pass instantly on because it requires a lot of quick thinking and a lot of trying to figure out how you would put two components together or three or four in a way that's not only funny and humorous but gets people to vote for you that also makes sense. Uh, for me personally, I like these kind of party games. I'd prefer these over Cards Against Humanity any day. Uh, with the added little bucket, it's a fun little gimmick, but the game itself is pretty solid. The components for the cards, the thin ones, are a little ch chinzy, ch cheapy. Uh, but the bigger cards are nicer. Uh, you just gotta be careful with them. They, they do bend pretty easily. But the game itself comes in this nice little bucket and it's sturdy and it's good. Maybe take it to the sand cat for sand castles of the beach. I, I don't know, but it's fun. Is it 17 or older? There might be some things that are a little more risque, but for the most part, you can take out some of these cards here and you can play this game up with teenagers and above. There's only a few of them that can actually, that actually are a little bit over the top. I think I even read the ones that were the most provocative in here. Uh, yeah, there's no bad words or anything, so, you know, it's kind of up to you as to, as a parent or um, as a friend whether you want to show this game off to your friends or not, but for me, I didn't feel this was very uh, mature uh, in comparison to what I thought it was going to be. Overall, a fun little party game. If you can get more than three or four people in a room, I would suggest taking a look at it, especially if you're doing a little drinking party or uh, just a uh, birthday party of any kind of sort. Uh, anyway, take a look at the uh, Bucket of Doom by Big Potato Games, if it sounds interesting to you, down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, I look forward to not having to smell this thing again. Um, one, one more time. Uh, uh, I don't. It's weird. It's like I'm addicted to smelling this stuff, even though I hate the smell. But I, I don't know.